I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, Why Does Life Suck So Bad Sometimes? Well, inquiring minds want to know the answer to that question. So before we get into it, I've got a quote I'd like to share with you that I wrote on the topic to help those of you who are suffering with this little quandary. And it says, Life can be really difficult and challenging at times. It's not all sunshine and roses. You are a divine being having a human experience. It is a gift meant to be enjoyed and appreciated. The reality is that everyone you love and everything that you build eventually will die and dissolve. The only thing that really matters is your relationship with yourself and others. Every struggle, tragedy, disappointment, and failure are designed to help you grow into the fullness of who the Creator designed you to be. You don't always have control over the circumstances of your life, but you always have control over the meaning you give them. Choose to see the purpose, lesson, gift, and positive meaning in your struggles instead of complaining or labeling them bad. Let's get into this guy's email here who's I think I answered uh, an email for him a while back. I think it was called, I, I feel like I'm going to die. He, he got dumped by his girlfriend. And so now he's, he's revealed some other things that have been going on in his life in the past year. And so you can also start to get some insight on why he's obviously feeling like shit and things seem to be going sideways in all areas of his life. And one of the things that I want to say before I get into his email that I've noticed about life whether it's a business or a career or a relationship or friendships, is that sometimes in life, things that are really important to you, they just dissolve and they fall apart. And sometimes a lot of things fall apart. Like I did, it, I read an email for a guy or went through an email for a guy the other day that I read in one of my other videos where he lost his job. He got laid off unexpectedly right after he'd bought a new car. His girlfriend had dumped him who he was living with and then he had to find a new place to live obviously and he had to find himself a new job but fast forward six eight months later he's found a new chick he's found a new job and things have turned around for him and the only thing you can do what I've learned is like when things dissolve like that it's like things have to fall apart in order for something better to fall together if you will and when something no longer serves you in life, in other words, when you've gained the gift or the full experience that you can gain from it, it tends to dissolve. And the best way you can get through it is obviously sometimes things that dissolve like that unexpectedly, like you know, when you look at like what went through 2008, 2009 when the economy went in the shitter, you know, I had a lot of friends and, and family that went through a really difficult time because of that. But the idea is that you learn from those things. They help you become stronger. And then maybe next time around, you don't get so over levered if you're in real estate or finance or in the construction industry. So you have money to weather those things because in the, in the big picture of things in the economy, there's a boom and bust cycle. That's just the nature of having a central type banking system that when the banks aren't lending, the money supply contracts in the economy and there's a domino effect. It's always the people who are like paycheck to paycheck. Those are the ones that suffer the most initially because you know they literally as soon as they lose their job, they're in dire financial straits. So let's get into this guy's email. He says, hi coach, I want to share something with you and maybe you're not interested in that but if you can help me understand and find my way of how to take life, how to take relationships, how to take emotions, and how to take other things and please help me. Well, just like I shared the quote, you gotta understand whatever's going on in your life, it's happening for a reason. It's you gotta look at it as a gift. Cause whatever you know, I read a, there was a quote I read a while ago is that and when you look at like a diamond and how a diamond is formed, it's formed deep within the earth through extreme heat and extreme pressure. And so through, and when you look at when you go through things like that in your own life, extreme pressure, extreme difficulty, extreme challenges, it's like those types of things help you become humble, obviously, but they also teach you what your real inner strength is. Because I, what I've learned in life is that it's like Henry Kissinger said. He says each success only buys a ticket to a more difficult problem. And so as you grow 
and you expand outside your current comfort zone and your current boundaries and what you presently see as your own personal capabilities, it enables you to grow into something bigger. And when you grow into something bigger, you take on even bigger challenges in the future. It's all part of because like I said earlier in a video I did a few days ago, it's like you look at Mother Nature. Anything time something stops growing in Mother Nature, what happens? It dies and is eliminated. He says, I'm not weak, but I'm a guy who lost his mother last year in April of 2012, and it was I was very close to my mother. My mother committed suicide, and it was very tough for me to agree on what she did. And after that, I had gone through hell like this year. And most of the time, the thing that I saw by my own eyes, my mom hanging from a ceiling fan, it kills me deep inside brutally. Well, you know, I, I understand what that's like. I've had family members that have committed suicide. Like my father was engaged to get married. I don't know, it's probably been five, six years ago now. And the woman he was dating was very in love with and she loved him, but she was a manic depressive. And from the time she was 21 until when she finally was successful at it, she would tried to commit suicide five other times or four other times. And the fifth time, she was successful at it. And, you know, it was a difficult time for my dad. He really struggled with it because he really loved this woman. And like I said, they were engaged to get married. And then she was off her meds and then just had a went through a bad patch. And then she ended up hanging herself. And, it, you know, it's tough when shit like that happens. And you feel kind of powerless. There's really nothing you can do about that. <clears throat> now, I've had friends that died when I was younger just unexpectedly one minute you're hanging out with them and a day or two later you find out that they're dead and they're gone and that's just everybody that you love and care about eventually is going to die some people sooner than others and that's why I said life's a gift and it's very short and it's very fleeting that's why you got to find a way to enjoy it and learn from these difficult things that you're going through because it's once something dissolves it's kind of like you got a clean slate it's like the etch a sketch you know if you have the old toy you had when you're a kid the etch a sketch it's like you shake it and it's all clean. You got a clean slate. And that's the way you should look at it. It's like your mother passed away, your girlfriend dumped you. You got a clean slate to create something new. That's the way you got to look at it. He says, I'm a guy and I don't want any girl to suffer due to me. And I'm not a guy who took love as a game. And I'm not a guy who ever can think about ditching a girl. He says, yet I'm emotional, caring, and sensitive, but not weak. I'd gone through two bad relationships and the one about which you helped me is a, is an actual relationship that meant something to me. And another one was a joke with me that this girl was using me just during the time of her breakup and again went back to her ex. It's like you can't do anything about that. It's like the past is the past. You don't have a time machine. You can't go back in time and fix that. You can't go forward in the future. The only thing you got is right now. And right now is all you got. You can make something of it. He says, anyways, coach, I read your whole book. It's awesome. And I also refer to one of my friends to read it. This book is good for one who is going to be in a relationship, but there is not quite much in the book for those who had suffered a lot and want to get an ex back. Well, I talk about that. And there at the end of the day, the thing you understand is it takes two to make a relationship work. You can't make somebody want you back. The only thing you can do is tell them what you want and then walk away saying, hey, give me a call if you change your mind. It's like, you know, and that includes when you're meeting women. You ask a woman out. Like this this past week, I met two women. I was, I was like, wow, these girls are really great. And I asked them both out. They both turned out to have boyfriends. And what did I say? Well, you're amazing. And they're, I, I met them at places that I frequent and I see them there quite often. So you never know. It's like why well, you don't want to burn a bridge. And so my answer, my response was, hey, well, if it doesn't work out, let me know. I think you're amazing. And both of them are like, oh, wow, you really think so? They were shocked. You know, it's amazing. Like the average, that's why I say he's like, tell a beautiful woman what you really think of her. Because, and you'll be shocked at the response because most beautiful women don't get approached. And certainly by guys that are willing to put their balls in a chopping block like that and say what they really feel and what they really mean. Even if she's unavailable, you're going to walk away from it going, fuck, that was awesome. I lit this girl up. It's like she had no idea of her beauty, even though everybody can see that she's hot. And that's the problem. Most guys are such fucking pussies, they don't have the balls to go up and talk to a woman that they really like. It's like, fucking light a girl up. Even if she's got a boyfriend, she'll be appreciative of the fact that you were actually a man and went over there and talked to her because they don't encounter those very often. 
And how do I know I coach a lot of women? They all tell me the same thing. It's like most of the guys they meet are fucking pussies. So, you know, that's the best way to handle that is whether it's an ex or a girl that turns out she's got a boyfriend when you ask her out. Hey, let me know if it doesn't work out. I'd love to hang out and have a drink with you sometime. That's all I got to say. If you see her again and you're chatting with her and she likes you, she'll let you know. You're like, hey, what's new? Oh, well, I'm not with my boyfriend anymore. I was like, that's fucking awesome. Let's get together and meet up for a drink. When are you free? It's real simple. Don't complicate things. Life is too short. He says, you know what, coach? He says, I know we are not in that age where if any relationship is broken, we try to fix them and not leave them. But I'm a guy who believes in doing all effort till where I can realize that there's now nothing to do because today almost 90% of people don't try their best effort. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, he's referring to this other woman that he wrote about. It takes two. She doesn't want to make the effort there's nothing you can do about it you've beat that into hamburger meat the only thing you can do is move on and get, get your fucking ass out there and start lighting some women up compliment them authentically tell them exactly what you think get in the habit if you see if you're walking out the door like i was walking out the door and there was a, a cute girl i didn't think she was stunning but you know it's like i treat all women like my girl and i was like hey beautiful and you know, i was opening the door you know as i was walking out she was coming in. i was picking up a takeout order for my dinner. And I was like, hey, beautiful. And I opened the door and she's like, oh, wow, well, thank you. She was appreciative that I opened the door and I was being a gentleman, but also that I, I said, hello, beautiful. I mean, it's not that I wanted to actually date this particular girl, but she was attractive and she'd done her makeup up nice and she was dressed nice. It's like, acknowledge beauty when you see it. Why? Because you'll start to notice more of it and the universe will bring more of it into your world when you're an appreciator of life anything that you appreciate and you acknowledge in your life is going to expand so don't hold those compliments and when you see a girl and you think she's got fucking nice legs walk up to her and it's like god you got great fucking legs saw a girl at the gym tonight she's like she had great fucking legs that was my opening line to ask her out it was like that's what i felt i mean she, i mean she was a former gymnast it's like you can imagine it's you know, that's all you got to do, man. Don't complicate things because at the end of the day, sitting at home feeling sorry for yourself, what good is that going to do you? All it's going to do is think about it. Whatever you focus on in life, it expands. So if you see beauty and you, you acknowledge it, guess what? You're going to see more beauty everywhere you go. And if you get in the habit of asking women out, even if you get shot down, it's like who fucking cares? You're going to make yourself feel good because you had the balls to go for it and you're going to make her feel good. Because you lit her up and you acknowledge her beauty, which is something for most really beautiful women. They don't get acknowledged very often because the average guy is too timid and too shy to even say that. So it's a win-win. But if you just sit at home focusing on your problems or the fact that your mother died. You know, it's like my mother died too. My mother was a psychotic schizophrenic. She flipped out, had a nervous breakdown when I was 19. She was never the same again after that. There's nothing I can do about it. It is what it is. She passed away. Fuck, it's almost almost 10 years ago. She passed away. It's like, I can't do anything about that. I mean, that, that's life. All you can do is, is move on. But like I said, if you just sit and focus on your problems, guess what? Your problems are going to be amplified. Those negative feelings that you feel, they're going to expand. Now, I'm not saying not feel the negative feelings that you feel. You got to take time to acknowledge that. But just say, hey, I feel like shit right now. I feel, like the, I feel depressed. I'm sad that my mother passed away. I'm sad that... This girl that I really liked rejected me. I'm sad that I lost my job. I'm sad that the stock market crashed. I'm sad that that business deal didn't go through. It's like, great. You got to feel it to heal it. But don't sit there and live there. You know, it's like you want to see your see life as it is, not worse than it is, and not better than it is. But just acknowledge life for what it is. Because when you acknowledge it and you feel it and you heal it, you're able to move through it quickly. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions. And if you want to get my ebook, the new version of my Kindle ebook, underneath the email sign up box on my website, there's a link that will take you right to Amazon. And I will talk to you soon.